Hello, Precalc. I'm not teaching anything new tonight. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and um, look at some review problems. So I'm going to do one from each type that we're going to see on the test uh, this week. And as you do, as I do, I'll do one and then you do one and bring it into class tomorrow and we'll see how you did. So let's go ahead and do the first one. The only thing on this test is solving trig equations. So let's look at all the different types that we have seen. Get my timer going. All right sine squared x minus 2 sine squared x equals 0. To solve a trig equation, we usually end up factoring. I can't think of one where factoring isn't involved. So let's factor this one. When there's two terms, you remove what's common to both. In this case, this has a sine x and this has a sine x. So I'm going to factor it out. And when I do that, I'm trying to find an expression here so that when I multiply it by sine x, I get back to sine squared x. It must be sine x. Similarly, here I'm looking for an expression when I multiply this time, sine x times it, it'll give me minus 2 sine x. So it must be minus 2. You always check your factoring by multiplying through, distributing through, and seeing if you get back to where you started. All right, why do we factor? Because when you have two things multiplied together, either the first one or the second one or both equal zero. So I'm going to go down each branch, set this one equal to zero, and set this one equal to zero. All right, where does sine x equal zero? On our unit circle, we see that the second coordinate right here is 0, and we see the second coordinate here is 0. So we will look at these are 80 um, or of high radians apart from one another. So, a way we capture both of them at once is we say 0 radians plus pi n. But that's silly, silly, silly to put a uh, 0 in your answer. So we'll simplify that to just pi n. And that represents an infinite number of answers to that branch. The other branch isn't as fortunate because it becomes sine x equals 2. And we know we've graphed the sine function probably a hundred times and we know that it only goes up to one and down to minus one. It never, whoops, slipped there. It never reaches two. So therefore there's no such answer to this um, trig branch, this equation. So we say no solution from this branch. So we've got one um, solution there, pi n. All right, now you try this one. It'll use similar techniques. You can write it right there in your comp book and we'll check it together at some point. All right, so good luck with that one. And I just leave a space for that one or turn the video off and do it right now. All right, when you come back, or right away we're going to do the next one. Secant squared x plus 6 tangent x plus 4 equals 0. Now on this one we see two different trig functions, secant and tangent, and we're only allowed to work in one. So we're not going to be able to solve that in two. So I have to think of a trig ID to replace this with so that it has tangent in it. And I know secant squared is 1 plus tangent squared. All 
All right, so from my Pythagorean IDs, I know that. So you need to be a, remember your, your three Pythagorean IDs. And the secant squared is 1 plus tangent squared. So now I see a 1 and a 4, so I can add those. So I end up with a 5. And now we are at the point where I, we have to factor. So this one has three terms. They don't have anything in common, so I'm going to have to factor it like a backwards foil. So what goes in the first position, it has to multiply to give you tangent, tangent x times tangent x will give you tangent x squared. The last position times the last position will give you 5, and at the same time, add to 6. So let's try 5 and 1. And let's check the inner product is 5x and the outer 5 tan x and the outer product is 1 tan x. They do add to, to give us the 6, so we have factored it correctly. So we factored it so that we can check each branch set equal to 0. And then we get tan x equals minus 5 on this branch and tan x equals minus 1. Now on the unit circle, we don't have any second coordinates divided by first that are going to give us a minus 5. So we pull that other trick that we learned when it's not on the unit circle. We have an expression and it is arctan of minus 5. And that tells the reader that this is the angle that has negative 5 as its tangent. So we're not sure what that is. We could put it in a calculator and get a decimal approximation, but this is exact. And we want an infinitude. We want all the answers to this branch. So arctan of negative 5 if you recall, when we used to graph tangent probably a hundred times, it went from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2, and the snakes went up like that. And notice the period before it starts repeating is pi. The difference between here and here is pi. So we are going to capture a negative 5 at every pi radians. So we're going to add pi n to the arc tangent. All right, over here, this is on the unit circle. So where is the second divided by the first equal to negative 1? Here it's square root of 2 over 2, negative square root of 2 over 2, and then positive square root of 2 over 2. So second divided by first is minus 1. So there's one answer, and then there's one down here where the tangent is also negative. So I, there are pi radians across from one another. So this one is 1 fourth pi, 2 fourths pi, 3 fourths pi, plus, and to capture the next one, we're going to go over pi n, and then the next, and the next. So everyone knows that n is an integer and it will capture all of the pi, the answers to 10x equals negative 1. All right, try this one for your own second secant squared x plus tangent x minus 13 equals 0. All right, see how that shakes out. All right. Moving right along, let's look at three secant squared x minus four equals zero. And this is one that I will do. And I'm going to get secant squared, cosecant squared x by itself. So I'm going to move the four over and divide by 3 
And now I want cosecant by itself, so it requires a square root of both sides. And so one mistake that was often made in the assignments, I hand it back, was the square root of both sides creates a plus or minus. So we're going to have, and the square root of 4 is 2, so I'll pull that out of the radical and leave the 3 in. So I prefer to work in sign, so I'm going to stand cosecant on its head. So I'll stand this on its head. And now I'm ready to go to the unit circle and figure out where this happens. So the sign is second coordinate. So maybe up here, where it goes over one half and up square root of three over two, that is the second. So we get one at pi over three. X equals pi over three. And one back here, it'll be a negative no, it's still positive because second still goes up. And one down here and one down here. So this one is across from this one, so I can catch it with a plus pi n. And this one is across from this one. So I this is 2 pi over 3. So I can catch this one by adding half a circle or pi n. This is not supposed to be in the denominator. I could hear your two hands up. They come across the miles. All right, so now the answers are complete for that trig equation. All right, here's one for you. 3 cotangent squared x minus 1 equals 0. So solve that and find the infinitude of answers. All right, I'm going to have to do a part two. So I'm going to shut this part down. And I do one, you do one, and we'll call it a night.